Will invited her to see a long French movie called Humanité, showing at the music box. He rode on his motorcycle there. She rolled her own and they smoked in her small flat above Milwaukee Avenue, just west to the elevated train. So close, you couldn't hear Late Night with Cohen O'Brien's monologues when the train passed. Maybe if the windows were closed, but they rattled when they were let down and loose in their vertical tracks. Don't mess with the third rail. The French he learned in five years of school and high rolled off his tongue. Je crois ça va, donnez-moi ta clé ce soir. She laughed. Ma chérie, he continued, clé de votre chambre grande. And she laughed at the bullshit and demanded he get sober before she stepped in the back of his bike. Ma belle. Helen had Will thawing out. The theater's white light swept around humanité like fingers dancing down piano keys, and he couldn't place the girl who sold them the tickets, stared at her when she tore the thick colored paper and held up a small line of moviegoers. Helen pushed him along, joking, eyes on the prize, eyes on the prize. That's me, you jag. They settled in for the show. Close to an hour into it, he had to know. So he walked up the aisle real slow and out through the leather wrapped doors with portal windows and surrendered to his poor memory and asked her her name. Rosemary. Okay, okay, he said. Rosemary, I can go with that. He knew he had seen her almost every day in a brief period in his life and guessed that she remembered him, but the impression he had made was so dilute she chose to discard it. He was wrong. He never made a bad impression on her. Uh, she mostly liked his looks. Her eyes and smile and tone of voice reminded him of somewhere, someone. You were always real nice to me, I know that much, he said. I think we had a mutual friend. She looked uncomfortable. He would have believed she had a problem with him, but saw her for her insecurities. The anxiety in her face, the wrinkles in her lips, fear in her eyes, tightness in her bridge. The theater vendor was closing shop, but Rosemary was nice enough to try and persuade the kids behind the counter to tap a cola. They wouldn't. When he returned from the jewel a block away, where he bought popcorn and a Coke, she said, don't let the manager see you. He won't let you bring food. I remember now, he said. You went to school with her. You two painted together. He gave her a hug. She really loved you, Rosemary. He was light and relieved from the discovery of her, who gave him a short embrace and couldn't help herself, though. Her long, dark hair was down. She was scared to say anything and upset him. Most of his friends couldn't help themselves. Nobody can. A few can admit it. He cared for Rosemary. She had no hard feelings for him and his poor memory. She was strangely personable. He could see the courier in her. The days broke, cold, unshowered, and alone. She spent on the streets of Chicago delivering artboards and letters to professionals who liked to wear black and hired models for receptionists. Some were professionals happily sold out. At least they were happy. The movie sucked and they left early, Helen and he. He pulled the choke and the bike started with a rumble. The ride home was cold, but she wrapped her arms around him, free of intention, and kept him warm. It's much nicer, she shouted, late at night. Are you very cold? No. Are you going to drop me off and go fuck that girl, Rosemary? No. Why would you think that? I was just kidding, Will. The nights were cooler now, but there were fewer cars around. Less noise and lights and distractions on the streets. He came upstairs when they returned to her flat and she rolled her own and they watched Conan and laughed. And he missed a joke the audience laughed at because the train went by.